This short video will provide a quick overview of creating tests in Blackboard. The first thing you'll need to do is decide where you'd like to place the test, whether that's in a content area or a content folder. I'll be using a content area for this demonstration. The first step will be to hover your cursor over the Assessments tab and choose Test. Uh, we don't have any existing tests. This would be maybe if you would copied your course or have been provided existing Blackboard uh, tests from other faculty members. So we're going to be creating. Uh, the first thing will be to uh, give the test a title. You can describe this. So maybe you tell students um, about the midterm if it's uh, all multiple choice. Um, or if it is timed, or um, let's see, or if they have multiple attempts on it, or if it's a test that's not worth any points, it's just there for students to kind of have a self check, self check opportunity. Excuse me. Uh, so the description, you just want to tell them as much as you can about the test. Um, if it's weighted, you could probably also tell them about how it's weighted towards their grade. Um, the instructions, uh, if there's anything specific they need to know about the test, you can provide it here. Um, and then finally, click Submit at the bottom. And so we've created the test, but it's blank. And so the next page that you get is what Blackboard calls the test canvas. Um, if your publisher's got Blackboard packages that you can import, that's when you'd be able to use these uh, reuse and upload or if you have existing Blackboard tests, you can pull those questions this way. Um, this video is going to focus on creating it from scratch. Uh, so we're actually going to move our cursor over the Create Question option, and you'll see that there are quite a few options down here. Uh, most of them are exactly as they sound, either or. Um, an essay just provides a large space for students to write. Um, some of the questions like fill in multiple blanks can be problematic when you set them up. Um, a popular question, and we'll look at some of these uh, specifically, is Hotspot, which allows you to upload an image and designate an area where a student needs to click. So let's say um, you had a, 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 um, a picture of Adobe Photoshop, and you ask students to click the Magic Lasso tool or the Crop tool. Um, they would move their cursor over that image and have to click in the right space um, to get correct answer on that uh, question. Um, it's probably easier explained uh, w when you see the question being made. So there's also multiple answer, matching, multiple choice, um, opinion or Likert scale questions, um, short answer, and true and false. So I'm going to just look at the most common. So an essay question you may not use this for essays, but you may want to use this if you want to give them plenty of space to write. Uh, you don't have to give questions titles, so you would give it a title if you wanted to break them into sections. Um, this is where you're going to insert your actual question, the question text, and you can use video and images here. Um, so if you wanted to insert an image of uh, the United States map and ask them which state is misspelled, they could look at that picture and then select the appropriate answer or type in the appropriate answer depending on the question. Um, that's probably not a great example, but um, so essay questions. This is just really this is how you give students the most space to write. Um, we have to be careful with this because Blackboard's looking for activity. So if students spending 45 minutes answering one question. Uh, we have to worry about their internet connection. Um, is it going to save their work? So we have to be mindful of things like that and encourage our students to use the best internet connection as possible and to avoid using uh, their mobile phones for taking tests. Anyway, so question title and then below, since it's an essay question or if you did a short answer question, this is just, um, they don't see this answer. This is just for you if you want to give yourself a model or if you have GAs that are helping you, you could provide them a model to grade with. Um, let's see, you don't really have to do anything else here. If you want to give notes about a question, maybe where it came from, uh, then you'll click submit. If you click submit and create another, it's going to get you right back to creating another um, essay question. So we'll just click Submit. 
Uh, let's see. Sorry. Uh, questions. So, won't let you submit it unless you give it a question. So that's a, a short essay, which is pretty much going to be the same thing as a short answer. And by default, Blackboard gives um, it a point total of 10. I don't worry about that until I've got all my questions in. So that's an essay question. Um, multiple choice. Let's look at that. It's going to be another common one. Um, so you, again, no title needed. Uh, your question goes in this space. You don't have to uh, answer these or adjust these options unless you want to. If you want to kind of mix it up so it's harder for students to uh, share answers and stuff, you can show the answers in a random order. Um, you can list the number of answers, so it defaults to four, kind of like what we expect on multiple choice uh, questions. You've got four answer boxes, uh, so you type an answer into each, um, or an option in each answer space, and then you have to use this radial button to designate which answer is the correct one. I'm going to click cancel since I'm not going to type all those uh, questions and answers in. So that was multiple choice. Let's take a look at a hotspot question. That's one that's probably going to be unfamiliar for most people. So click hotspot. Your question text isn't going to be the image. Um, what you want to say here is you're telling the student what they're looking for in an image. So um, where is the um, Apple Music icon in the following screenshot? So I've got my question. I'm going to scroll down. It's going to ask me for that image. So I've got to browse my computer. Uh, whoops. I'm going to select that screenshot. <clears throat> uh, we do need to give it um, alternate text. You know, if an, if for a hotspot question, if the image doesn't display, I'm not sure how the student would be able to answer it. Um, but I would go ahead and include this anyway. Um, image of a, of a uh, car phone. I think that's the picture I picked. Or no, this is the screenshot. Uh, so, uh, screenshot of... Drew's computer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we've got our question, uh, what they're looking for in the image. Um, we have uploaded the image that we want them to see. Uh, I've given it alt tag or alt text. I'm going to click next. So the next thing Blackboard's going to want us to do is to uh, kind of specify what area of that image they need to click on. And so, whew, let's see, it's a big picture, right? Um, Let's see, and there's no, I've asked them to look for something that's not there. So what I can do is um, you click and drag the area that you want them to click in. So I've, I've chosen this. So maybe my question would be how do you minimize, maximize, or close um, Apple Music? And so I've uh, chosen this area. I can scroll down. And you see it's giving it coordinates. But if I want to select a new area, I can click Clear come back up to my image and we can say um, we want them to click here. So as the coordinates, um, if you, I, it, best practice would be to give them some feedback for this, you know, so if you clicked in the wrong spot and you didn't get this question correct, what you want to do is go re-watch my video overview of Apple Music or uh, Adobe Photoshop, whatever the program is that you're looking at. Um, well, I guess that would be your incorrect response. Your correct response, if you're going to provide one, just, woo, yay, congratulations. Um, really, I just try to make sure I'm including an incorrect response. Um, notes if needed, and then when you click Submit, it's going to create that hotspot question and put it in the course. Um, you have to edit it to see the correct um, location. So we've got a multiple choice. We've looked at essay questions, hotspot, um, uh, most of the questions are going to be exactly what they sound like. Um, so just to explore, Blackboard has um, specific information about each question online. Um, so if you run into any trouble with setting up one of these questions, just let me know. And if I don't know an answer, we can dig around online and try to figure that out. So once you have all of your uh, questions set up for your tests, um, you probably have in mind how much the test is going to be worth. I don't want each question to be worth 10, so what I could do is select all questions and tell Blackboard how many points I want it to be worth. So I'm going to just say one point a piece, and I click Update. 
my questions have now been, um, re the point total has been recalculated. I've got all my questions in, so our next step is to click OK. All right, so we've made the test. Now we're going to put the test in the class. So it's asking us, do we want to create or do we want to add that midterm? So we're going to click add the midterm. And this is where we get to our test options. Again, it should pull your instructions that you typed in earlier. Um, I like to let them see the description ahead of time. I don't tell Blackboard to open the test in a new window. That's entirely up to you. We do have to make it available to them. If you want a automatically generated announcement to go out for the test, you can click yes. Uh, if you'd like to allow multiple attempts or unlimited, um, if it's a number of attempts, you enter it here. If it's unlimited, that would be, you know, if you had a syllabus quiz uh, or something like that and you wanted them just to have as many shots as they can or a self-check quiz that's not worth any points. Um, forced completion just means that they have to uh, complete the test in one setting. So that means if their internet connection cuts out, it's going to automatically submit the test. Um, normally, I would encourage this use, but since we're sending students away from campus where we're not sure what their internet connections are like, I would leave that off. Instead, set a timer. Um, and you have two options here. You can, well, one, you have to set an amount of time, and then you can set auto submit. If you leave auto submit off, it's going to say the student went over the 60 minutes when you go to grade the test. If you leave it, uh, if you turn auto submit on, as soon as that 60 minutes is up, it's going to submit it. Um, there's no and there's no way to take that back on our end or the students end. I don't use display and dates unless you pre-build these and you don't want them to open till a certain day. Um, test availability exceptions. That's going to be a different video if we need it. That's really how you provide accommodations to students. So additional time, additional attempts, uh, different days, things like that. Uh, the due date, as always, please use the due date so it shows up on the student's calendar. Um, instead of using dates other places, I use the due date and this option right here, which uh, basically says this is when it's due. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't care when you take it as long as you take it before the due date, because once the due date hits, you won't be able to access or take the test. Um, Self-assessment options, we want this test to be included in the grade center total, so we leave that checked unless um, you don't want it to count towards the total. I don't mess with this. Uh, the feedback and results, this is where you really want to kind of think through what you want them to get. So after they submit, do you want them to show their score per question, all answers, the correct answers, the answer they submitted. Um, if you actually uh, inserted feedback for the questions, you could check that. Uh, you could show what they got incorrect. Um, if you don't want it to be immediate after they submit, you could say um, after a specific date. So you know the test is due on April 1st. You could say on April 2nd, students can see this feedback. Um, you could also say after attempts are graded. But that means that everybody has to take the test. And then if for anybody that doesn't take the test, you have to manually enter that zero for them before it's going to show up. So your best bet here is either after submission with kind of limited feedback or on a specific date or after the due date um, for that feedback. And then the last thing on the test settings is how do you want the test to be presented to students? So all of the questions at once, one at a time, uh, do you want to prohibit them from going forward and backwards? That might be as if, uh, if questions build on each other. Um, I, I don't use that. Uh, we already selected or we talked about how you can randomize the answers for each question. You can also randomize the question order. I like to use this so that means every student gets the same questions, they're just in a different order. Anyway, after you get all your settings set up or, or established, you'll click the submit button and you can come back and edit these at any time. And now our midterms available in the content area. So a really, really fast uh, recap, what we did was we went to the area of the course we wanted to build the test, we used the assessment area, uh, tab and selected test, we formed our questions, and then we set up our test settings, and then we deployed it to the class by clicking submit.